Hi there, let's make some bike maintenance video and this one will be about chain drop, a super annoying thing that can cause a frame damage, a serious rear wheel and rear derailleur damage. And of course, if we are racing, chain drop means losing some precious time. And yes, guys, it's uh, irritating for me as well that we just begin using like smartphone operated wireless electronical uh, drivetrains and still have to deal with this simple problem, which is the chain drop. So I'm, go I'm gonna show you from my experience the three main causes or groups of what causing the chain drop and we'll try to minimize risk of this pain uh, on our bikes, all right? So <laughs> let's just see what the chain drop is. I've prepared some super nice chain drop for you guys. That's it, that's losing our transmission. This one will be the most common one and it means uh, dropping the chain from the smallest chain ring on the crankset, between the crankset and the frame. So it goes inwards. The other one would be dropping the chain outwards here. Uh, it will be not as common and easy to fix. And the third one, the easiest to fix, but the most dangerous one is dropping the chain between the largest sprocket on the cassette and the spokes because we can break those spokes just on our wheel. And if we have like some nice expensive wheel it can be a real pain of course we can also drop the chain between the cassette and the frame um, and then uh, it can be difficult to uh, to remove from here so uh, these are the different uh, kinds of cha chain drops and now what's causing it the first one our, it's our drivetrain adjustment the second one it's our components compatibility and um, and the wear and the third one is our riding and shifting style and it has a huge impact on what's happening with our uh, chain so let's go to the first one our drivetrain uh, adjustment of course the most obvious one would be setting correctly those limiting screws on the front and on the rear derailleur let's start uh, with the rear you can just uh, look it up on my video on how to adjust the, rear, uh, the, the derailleur or the drivetrain once we set those limiting screws so that the cage of the rear derailleur will not go too far down or too far up we are just done with it we are all set and i'm never never touching those two limiting screws again it just works so fine so make sure it's done well and your derailleur doesn't go too far and even if you try to like overshift overshoot uh, your gearing it never it never goes too far with the front one, it's quite an easy task to set this one, which will be the limit, limiting screw uh, for, for the largest uh, chain ring. But with this one, it can be more, more tricky. Do you know why? Uh, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna just take this uh, uh, chain once off, once more off. And this is how my front derailleur operates. As you can see, it really operates with power and it's super quick. And once I, I simply push my, uh, my shifter just uh, all the way, uh, my uh, front derailleur makes all the travel down the, the crankset. It does it so quick uh, that sometimes it could uh, cause a chain drop. So um, the how to solve this problem means to set your limiting screws really on the, on the maximum um, position possible. How is it so? I'm having now the largest uh, sprocket on the cassette and well, I hope you can see that my chain is almost rubbing against the cage of the front derailleur or even rubbing just a bit. I was just I, I was just doing it like an hour ago. Maybe that that's that would be fine. Uh, why is it so? I don't want to be. Uh, I don't want my chain be rubbing against the uh, cage, but I don't want the cage to be like the chain to be in the middle of the cage because then uh, the 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 cage of the front derailleur will really hit this chain with the power and pull it off the uh, crankset. Now uh, this is uh, Altigra 10 speed uh, six, uh, 600 and um, the newest models of different uh, brands will not allow 
uh, you to uh, sh downshift all the way down with just one uh, push. So they will have some limit, you push it and then you will have some trimming uh, and it really minimizes the risk of the uh, downshift. But for myself, I have to put this uh, cage as far outwards as I can having the largest uh, sprocket here and the smallest here. So this is uh, how it's done. The second thing is also that if you experience chain drop quite often, like regularly, uh, you might try to play a bit with the tension of this front derailleur cable. Uh, I know that it can like be messy uh, with your with your gearing and the shifting, but sometimes uh, you will not maybe like. Uh, uh, make your shifting worse, but uh, you will minimize the risk of a, a chain drop. Maybe by, by putting a bit more tension on the front derailleur cable. So just try try to play with those limiting screws and the uh, and the uh, tension of the cable. Now remember that, for example, now I'm not experiencing any rubbing of my chain. But uh, under load, when I'm really pedaling, it can happen just a bit. So sometimes we can readjust those limiting screws after doing some rides. So uh, this will be limiting screws, the cable tension, and the third one will be the chain, uh, the length of the chain. Because the longer the chain is, uh, the more mm, work our derailleur has to do to just keep it tight and if the chain isn't tight it will be just bouncing up and down and then we can experience some chain drops so we should not be assuming that um, that if we just bought a new bike uh, the length of the chain is right for us uh, we have to just um, rethink uh, when something is going wrong and of course always when we are changing like the gearing ratio on the cassette or on those um, uh, crank set on the crank set we have to uh, just check it out whether the length of the chain is all right it shouldn't be too long it shouldn't be too long uh, on some mountain bikes i i would even um, put it sometimes maybe a bit tight i'm gonna show you that on on the killer just in a second so we remember about adjusting all here and then second thing is the components compatibility and wear. Let's talk about wear first. Uh, we should be regularly checking our chain wear, right? It cannot be worn down because um, if the chain is worn down, it will be much more flexy and it will be much more uh, easy for the chain to jump uh, just up the, uh, up the crankset or down in between the crankset uh, and the frame so it shouldn't be uh, worn down same with our uh, chain mix remember that those teeth those hold our chain uh, into place so if these are like really really worn down we should uh, replace uh, the chain ring but the reason the other reason here is also the compatibility and that's an issue for myself really here because as you can see i'm having uh, fsr go summer uh, cranks it here with the FSA um, 36 teeth uh, smaller chainring but the larger one is from strong light and it doesn't seem to be working fine with my Shimano chain I have some issues I was trying to you know readjust my uh, my front derailleur position because it didn't just shift right and I, I was experiencing some um, some chain drop even outwards but inwards as well so this one is kind of tricky a uh, couple of days ago my friend called me and asked me whether the KMC chains are fine I said yes go ahead and buy one I had many and these were cool and it turns out that for his 105 components KMC chain didn't work fine and he just uh, replaced that one with Altigra chain and chain and now everything works fine so make sure that uh, all the components really work well with each other. Uh, one more thing here is also with the adjustment, if we go back to adjustment, is the uh, tension of your, uh, of your screws. Because sometimes when we put too much torque on certain screws and too little on others, we can also uh, cause our chain ring 
to be kind of you know not really straight and then we can experience some chain drops so we have to make sure that these are I'm not using a, like a torque wrench here uh, but I'm making sure that I'm starting like with this one then this one this one this one this one little by little and then I can really feel that it's all tight like evenly on the whole uh, crank set so that is something also to have in mind and then the third thing is our riding style and, and shifting style. Now, what can we say here? If you remember Tour de France, uh, I think it was two years ago uh, when Andy Schleck was uh, trying to really make some, uh, make some uh, attack on the uphill and he experienced, I'm not sure whether it was a chain drop or even a chain suck, but while we are pedaling with a lot of strength or on a, um, high cadence, it's really difficult for our chain to really like get into the chain rig that we want them they want it to to go and um, just because uh, you know it's all too on too high speed so i'm gonna try to show you maybe i'll be able to do some chain drop here if i'm pedaling like really hard i'm attacking and then i'm hitting some like steep uphill maybe some uh, some corner and the uphill well, I was unable to do it right now, but sometimes, sometimes you will be able to do it. All right. What I did, I was just uh, spinning like with cadence of uh, 90 or 100 and then I hit my shifting lever with a lot of force and very, very quickly. And this is what happened here. Normally I wouldn't experience a chain drop, but in some extreme situation you are able to do that. So when you are changing the gear, uh, don't pull so much, uh, mo not momentum, but torque on your, uh, on your drivetrain. Try to, to do it just a bit, bit uh, softer, just for the moment of uh, changing the gear and it will be just fine. Uh, and there is also one more thing I'm gonna show you on my mountain bike. So let's take this uh, Canada off the stand. All right, it's very good to have our killer as, a, as an example here because this is a mountain bike and also this is a one by drivetrain. So we may also think that when we have a narrow white chain ring, which is really fine design, uh, we'll never experience a chain drop. We can experience chain, chain drop, of course. And I did experience one on the last race and I'm, I'm going to show you what happened just here on the video because I did film a whole race. Um, when you will be watching this moment, just just uh, pay attention what's happening. I'm riding uh, through a just some strong, strong bumps. There was a lot of uh, uh, roots on the track, and I was hitting the hitting the corner, trying to uh, get a right position with my right knee to the inside of the corner. And in order to do that, I did spin uh, my crank set backwards, and that's how I got my chain off the crank set. That was actually the first chain drop uh, on my one by um, drivetrain so make sure that especially uh, if you don't have to and if you are going through some rough terrain do not spin backwards because your chain can be bouncing like just a little bit and then when you're spinning this is what happens to your drivetrain it's really it's really easy to to make uh, the chain drop just by yourself when you do it like this and also when we are just riding hard through some uh, rough terrain and we are pedaling uh, it's just good to keep the tension on the chain here so while we are pedaling it's okay but when we stop pedaling for a minute and then there is not so much tension here the chain will start uh, bouncing once more and then we can experience chain drop like this so uh, if you need transmission if you need to or you know you're gonna be uh, pedaling through some rough terrain don't stop pedaling if it's possible of course um, and if you will start pedaling try to do it gently and try to avoid 
pedaling backwards. Of course, having Shadow Plus system on uh, Shimano derails will help uh, because uh, it is it is quite a ki uh, kind of uh, well designed and 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 strong. Uh, but you know why? Uh, you know what? I would really uh, be ready to mount here some some chain guide, like carbon chain guide, instead of the front derail. The guide would weigh maybe around I don't know 12 grams, and it would really help me avoiding uh, chain drops. All right, so that's it, uh, guys. I'm hoping that you will write me in the comments uh, when did you, when, when are you experiencing some chain drops and what do you do then? And in the next episode, I'm gonna show you how should we behave when, uh, when we get the chain drop in the front or in the rear, what should we do? Maybe we'll be able to keep going or at least not making our hands messy of the oil on the chain. So thanks for watching. I hope it was helpful guys for you. Give me some thumbs up and I will see you soon. Bye bye.